There's a shooting going on in Odessa, Texas. The final moments of what began as a routine traffic stop. Oh, he hits the barrier! The suspected gunman, a white man in his 30s, shot dead by police outside a cinema complex in Odessa, Western Texas. What's going on? There's a shooter. Where there are multiple scenes and multiple victims. Um, at some point, the subject stole a mail truck, ditched his car, and there were other victims after that. According to Monitor's The Gun Violence Archive, it's the 279th mass shooting in the US this year. It comes just weeks after a white nationalist shot dead 22 people in a shopping centre in the Texan border city of El Paso. Gun violence is a hugely political issue in the United States. Within minutes of the shooting, candidates vying to be the next president weighed in with Democrat and Texas native Beto O'Rourke making a call to action, tweeting, we need to end this epidemic. This was a desperate dash for the Turkish border by Syrians hemmed in to the shrinking corner of their country, still under control of anti-Assad fighters. But Turkey isn't letting any more Syrians in. An increase in shelling and bombing of Idlib by the Russian-backed forces of the Syrian regime has, according to the UN, pushed up to a million Syrians towards Turkey. They've no shelter, food or sanitation. But from a Saturday morning, the Russians say the offensive will stop, for now. This is not the first ceasefire and I'm afraid not the last ceasefire. All the previous ceasefires uh, fate uh, was the same, so the terrorists immediately broke this ceasefire. I hope that this one will last, uh, but uh, I really have doubts, uh, given the situation that, uh, that is there. The Russian military says that the US carried out a deadly airstrike in Syria's Idlib province without first giving notice, thereby violating, quote, all agreements. Um, Murad, some people might question why is Russia so angry here because it seems the US has targeted a jihadi training camp which on the face of it sounds like a good thing. Well, uh, just a little bit of uh, background. Idlib had been a bitter battleground for, for many months now. The Syrian army against rebels, jihadists, uh, the Syrian army coming out on top, taking a number of strategic towns. But throughout all of these months, uh, the United States, uh, Europe had been demanding, calling for a ceasefire. Uh, yesterday, at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, 31st of August, a ceasefire was uh, unilaterally called by Syria. Its forces stopped everywhere, no more offensive maneuvers, uh, its air force was grounded. Uh, a unilateral ceasefire backed by Russia, backed by Turkey. A few hours after the ceasefire took place, uh, took hold, uh, the United States carried out a wave of airstrikes on Idlib, where it says it was targeting uh, an Al-Qaeda training camp. A 19-year-old man has been killed and nine others wounded, three of them seriously, in a knife attack in the French city of Lyon. City authorities said two men, one armed with a knife and the other with a kebab skewer, carried out the attack. One of the men was arrested. Local media reported that he was born in Afghanistan. His accomplice remains at large. The men carried out the attack near the Laurent Bonvay metro station on Saturday afternoon. In May, an explosion on a street in downtown Lyon injured 13 people. An investigation said it had been a terror attack and that the attacker had sweared allegiance to so-called Islamic State. A group of military experts is calling on Congress to force the disclosure of the number of US bases overseas. In their letter, they described the information currently provided by the Pentagon as limited and frequently incomplete. The Pentagon's annual base structure report provides some information about the number and size of base sites overseas. However, it fails to report on dozens of well-known installations in countries worldwide and frequently provides incomplete or inaccurate data. Many suspect the Pentagon does not know the true number of installations abroad. 
Earlier, my colleague Jacqueline Vuga to speak with the retired U.S. Army colonel and signatory to the letter, Anne Wright. She says that U.S. citizens are often surprised to learn of the location of American military bases. Well, I'm a uh, U.S. Army uh, colonel. I spent 29 years in, in the U.S. military, and I think it's very important that American citizens know how many bases we have, where they are, and how much it costs to run them. Our top story. President Moon Jae-in has left for his trip to three Southeast Asian countries, Thailand, Myanmar and Laos. His first stop will be in Thailand, where he will work to boost bilateral cooperation across many sectors, particularly technologies related to the fourth industrial revolution. President Moon Jae-in begins his three-nation tour to Thailand, Myanmar and Laos on Sunday, September 1st. This week-long tour to Southeast Asia comes ahead of the special summits that South Korea is scheduled to hold later this year. We anticipate it to be an important opportunity for the president to fulfill his promise to visit all 10 ASEAN nations within his term and solidify the basis for cooperation to successfully host the South Korea ASEAN Special Summit and the South Korea Mekong Summit in Busan this November. President Moon's first destination, Thailand. Thailand is the chair of ASEAN this year and a key part of Moon's new southern policy. The investigation into suspicious deaths at a VA hospital in West Virginia. One patient confirmed to have died from insulin injections, although he was not diabetic. And there appears to be many others like it now under investigation. The sudden death of 82-year-old Felix McDermott, a Vietnam veteran here at the Clarksburg VA hospital, is now at the center of a horrifying mystery. Last year, authorities say someone at the hospital injected McDermott with insulin, even though he was not diabetic and it killed him. The medical examiner flatly saying the manner of death is homicide after being administered by an assailant. We want to know. We, we need answers and the family needs answers. McDermott is one of potentially 11 veterans who died at that hospital under suspicious circumstances and there's now a broad federal investigation that includes the FBI. His family has filed a wrongful death claim alleging the other patients were also injected with insulin that they did not need. Newly released emails reveal how agri-chemical giant Monsanto attempted to discredit an action group campaigning against its weed killer. Moms across America had raised the alarm over the use of one of the company's leading products called Roundup. That's your enemy. Beat the shit out of them and put them on the defensive and you won't have this problem. I have been arguing for a week to beat the shit out of them and I have clearly lost. We don't want to be seen as beating up on mothers. Nobody will listen to it anyway. It has to be done by third parties. Well, in 2013, the action group sent an open letter to, to Monsanto's top management calling on them to stop selling GMO seeds and spraying crops with glyphosate and other pesticides. 